Before we jump into the topic, I just want to say a quick thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Being reachable only at home, twisting the cord around my thumb while being confined to just one room, crossing our fingers all the way to Blockbuster, praying they have the next season of Alias, arguing about the difference between brown bears and bears that are brown because the answer was not in the palm of our hands, sharing big life news like engagements and babies only to close friends and family, the frantic search for pen and paper, memorizing phone numbers, going to the bank, the sound of dial-up, picking up developed film, browsing information rather than pinpointed research, Research, printing out a map quested road trip, then turning to Thomas Guide for help, jotting movie times on a post it, libraries, actual experts, delayed feedback on something that you've created, patience, pen pals, newsprint, sloppily refolding the Sunday funnies for my dad's turn, and sliding my finger down a touchable dictionary. I miss all that stuff. Because at this point, well over a decade since the smartphone was invented, we finally seem to be realizing the negative effects of being on our phones all the time. Being constantly connected, always within reach, having the capacity to know everything at any moment of the day, never needing to memorize anything. The struggle is gone, everything is so convenient. And this is, uh, this is me being fearful of new technology, which I recognize happens every time new technology comes out. Because I'm looking at my own life and I'm positive that living with the potential to know everything has made my brain mushy, not smart. I was clever back then because just because I know more now or I have the ability to know more doesn't actually make me smarter. In other words, just because my phone is smart doesn't make me so. In fact, it seems to be making me less so. I used to have so many friends' phone numbers memorized and it was like a badge of kinship when I could recite those seven digits back to them if they pop quiz me. I didn't used to be this terrible at directions, but now having lived in this house for four months, I still need to type in this address to get home. <laughs> and though I'm a decade older, I don't feel a decade brighter and I'm blaming the phone. I used to remain in the library studying for hours and browsing information and investing my focus into difficult reading books that required such focused attention and now I can't get through a page of As I Lay Dying without interrupting myself to text my friend, oh how difficult Faulkner is. Catherine Price, the author of How to Break Up Your Phone, summed it up so perfectly. She said we are busy but ineffective, connected but lonely. She goes on to explain that our phones don't only take up our precious time but the way we are using them are making us mushy and ineffective and unfocused. She says that toggling between apps, constantly refreshing our feed and responding to notifications makes our brains better at being distractible and worse at being focused. And the more we reach for our phones during downtime, the more we interrupt our process of making memories, which allows us to make connections and allow for creativity and insight. And here's the scary and illuminating part. A lot of ex-employees from Google, Apple, and Facebook are coming out now about the dangers of smartphones, especially when it comes to the developing brains of children. And many of them actually don't even allow their children to use the very products they've helped create. Chris Marcelino, a guy who helped Apple develop push notifications, said smartphones hook people using the same neural pathways as gambling and drugs. And Sean Parker, the ex-president of Facebook, said the tech world is taking advantage of a vulnerability in human psychology, referring to the release of dopamine when refreshing uh, feeds and checking notifications. He said that they, the inventors, understood this consciously and we did it anyway. So a lot of these ex-tech employees are spending all their energy fighting against the very products they helped design and create, such as Tim Harris, an ex-Google employee who started a nonprofit called Time Well Spent. I've linked it below for you to check out. Another interesting thing is there's an expert at uh, Harvard Medical School, he's an expert on ADD, and he said the symptoms of those with ADD are the exact same as those with smartphones. And the reason is our attention span is like a muscle. It's a skill we have to continually work at. The more we distract ourselves with the name feeds and notifications and emails and news pop-ups, the more we are practicing it being distracted and the less we are practicing being focused. And it turns out being highly focused on one thing is very, very good for our mental capacities. There was a 2014 study on people who are highly distracted on multiple forms of media and what they discovered is that these people lose the same quantity of IQ as those who smoke cannabis or those who lose a night's sleep. You are not weak or dumb for being addicted to your screen. Smartphones are very addictive. They're literally designed to be addictive. One of the best things I ever did with my smartphone was turning off all notifications except for texts and phone calls and that one 
weekly reminder about street sweeping so I don't get another $60 ticket. And here's something else that's crazy. Yes, I personally am rather disciplined when it comes to how I use my smartphone. Instagram is deleted from my phone most of the time unless I want to post something. I'm super selective about how I spend time on my phone. And it turns out that just the magnetic pull of having a smartphone and using energy to be disciplined enough to ignore it depletes me of energy I could be using to focus on something else more important or so concluded a study at the University of Texas. And yes, there are some things I absolutely love about having a smartphone, a supercomputer in my pocket, but it scares me how dependent we are on it. And since all this new research is coming out proving how disruptive these devices are to our well-being, not just our mental capacities, but our relationships with people, I honestly regret ever getting a smartphone in the first place. And I want to be sharp again. I'm tired of being mushy, so I might get a flip phone. I think this is the solution for me, just once this guy poops out on me. And honestly, lately, I feel like I'm becoming more and more hermetic. It started with me deleting Instagram from my phone because I would be hanging out with my friends, they would mention something that I should be aware of because it would have been on my feed if I were looking at my feed but I wouldn't know about it. At first it made me feel less connected to my social circle and then I liked it because I ended up having real conversations in real life about these topics. Also once I stopped teaching journalism I stopped reading the news, don't tell anyone, and I did this intentionally because I found it really distracting for my own work and I figured if something really big and important happened I would hear about it and I was right. I wonder though if my future purchase of a flip phone is my next step to becoming a pariah because although all these alarm bells are sounding and all this research is saying, hey careful maybe smartphones aren't so good for your brain, no one else seems to be making this step. Everyone seems to be still rather addicted. I don't see a lot of people actively resisting and they just kind of hear about the research and say yeah that's some scary I just keep thinking if I do disconnect digitally and I go to a flip phone, I'm expecting to become, you know, the 10 years younger Hannah who's like sharper and cleverer and more intentional with my time and focused and yet I just become that person who's not following the stream of everyone else, like I'm not keeping up. And maybe it's important not to be so resistant because this is our reality and will likely continue to be in our future. I don't know. But in learning about all these alarms and all the research, I'm a little bit encouraged because there is a pressure on the tech world right now for people to become more ethical in how they create their products and their apps and technology. So perhaps our future isn't so grim because there are really passionate people holding the tech world to the fire right now. I don't think I'll ever stop thinking about or talking about this topic. I find it really interesting because we're in this cultural phenomenon that is literally shaping our future brains. So I've left some links to a few articles in the description, as well as a link to a book that I read a couple years ago. It's super fascinating. It's a dive into these ideas within a fictional and rather prophetic world. It's called The Circle by Dave Edgers, and it's just as pertinent to our reality as uh, 1984 was to Orwell's. Now, if you want to point out the hypocrisy of me, an internet person whose job it is to create content for you to view, likely on your smartphone, I actually made a whole video about this interesting paradox. I'll link it below as well. Now, as wary as I am of having a supercomputer in my pocket, and as much as I can see myself becoming a flip phone girl, I also live in the real world, a world in which if you are an entrepreneur or a creator of any kind, you need a website. And my favorite website building platform is Squarespace. For me, my own website serves a couple purposes. It's where I have my shop for my thrifted merch, new batch coming soon. It has my contact page, and it's a placeholder for when my book is published one day. I built my website all by myself using Squarespace, and it was so empowering because it's incredibly easy to do. Squarespace makes it so simple to create a beautiful website without the cost of paying a high price designer. If you are in need of a site, stop procrastinating. Go to squarespace.com com slash Hannah McNeely for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase and start building your gorgeous website today.